Isn't that wonderful? This is just too cool. So for the grass video um, yesterday, I was watching back and I didn't talk, I talked a little bit about the most important thing, um, but I didn't talk about it and give it the attention that it deserves. The most important thing for stopping grasses, yeah, it's nice to block them with underground walls, whether that's a rhizome wall or a plastic barrier. You know, I just don't like using plastic, so I like using living things instead. But the most important thing, and I talked about it a bit, is shading, so dense planting. You can see where, like where, where we have really dense shading on the property, dense planting, we don't have as much grass issues coming in. Like this, considering I ba basically don't do any maintenance on this swale at all, this, if I didn't have this rhizome wall, would be a just a carpet of grass. But um, it's actually almost no grass at all. They're all coming in from the top side. If anything, where I also don't manage it at all. I mean, you can see I have grass going to seed here just because I don't manage that at all. Maybe I could, but I just don't have time to do everything. But shading is really, really important. This area here is right near the house, and this is the part that my wife sees the most. She's getting more accustomed to a wilder, denser planted look, um, but we come from suburbia, and kind of plants on display is what looks normal and you know clean and manicured and controlled it's one of the reasons why I go to the you know edged borders and the trenches something that looks a little more tidy even this you know once in a while she'll say hey we, let's go clean up your gardens and stuff um, what I what really works the best for the creeping grasses though is something way more densely planted than this so this is um, not how I would run an ideal food forest garden. I would plant even more thick. And I've said that on a, a few of my videos before about things that I change and what I do now um, is that I plant way more densely even than this. So if you want to really stop grasses from coming in, the trench is great, the rock wall is okay, they'll still go between the cracks, big logs are better. Um, but they'll still get underneath the rocks and all that. What you really want is just on the other side of that rock is just a wall of shade. Okay, so let's look at a couple other examples where I can really illustrate this point to you. This here is an area um, that had ornamental gardens in the beginning. I put some comfrey in there. There's hydrangeas. I have grapes. I put Russian olive or autumn olive in there. An apricot tree that did mysteriously die this year. It's done really well, and then all of a sudden this year just gave up and died. Um, we got more grapes in the background, mullen. So I'm kind of flushing out a little guild here. This is kind of on top of the septic, so I don't want to plant um, huge trees. This was a dwarf tree. It has manageable rootstock. The grapes tend to be shallow rooted. I mean, the comfrey's got deep roots, but it's not going to really damage weeping tiles or septic system. So I can't really go too crazy on trees in this guild, but you'll see what I did also is bordered it with the logs. Now, where the logs have um, where the logs have shade over top of it, for the most part, grasses aren't getting in. Like I said, they're still going to get in. You know, say between the cracks, they'll they'll find their way in and then they'll kind of exist just hiding in there a little bit but that's not a big deal you know we can't sit there and go and try to eradicate plants um, or at least we shouldn't right because if the grass and its skinny little blade is able to get up through stuff and perform a little photosynthesis that's actually not too terrible it's not terrible but for the most part you know you have thick shade you don't get very many grasses creeping in However, where we have less shade, we actually have grasses creeping under the log and then establishing a little further in. So this was planted out to stuff like uh, strawberries, um, daylilies, uh, Egyptian walking onions, and my nectarine tree 
and we've got some grasses creeping in underneath the log. So I'll have to pull that out, maybe dig a nice edge in. Um, but if I had this thicker with shade, I wouldn't get as many grasses. You can even tell right here, lots of grass, no shade. A tiny bit over, we've got strawberries shading it out. We've actually got no log in around here, so grasses could totally creep in, but for the most part, they're not. So it's all about shade. It's about edging and borders and trying to block the rhizomes underground. The logs don't do that, so they can get in underneath the logs and pop up. As soon as they pop up, if they're met with shade, then you'll outcompete the grasses as well. This is the Jerusalem artichoke swale, and you can see here, it's right next to grasses and there's nothing there to block them, but because we have such a thick mat of Jerusalem artichokes, they shade out and stop the grasses from coming in. So, you know, if you're looking down in there, there's actually almost no grasses at all in here, just because it's getting shaded out. Just on the other side of this raised bed, we have the actual proper uh, top of the swale, and then there's a cut down, and then there's a berm on the other side. So these trees are actually planted into the top of a uh, lower swale. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. Um, but it had only been filled out to about there. This whole part up here was just basically left wild, and you can see that they actually just have grass growing. I sowed wildflower seeds into it. I did put the odd tree in here. Um, just to kind of eventually get up over it because I had extra trees from a big order and I just started plugging them everywhere. So there will be the odd tree kind of popping up in there, like this guy here, popping up over top. But this is just grass. However, you know, it has full ability to, to expand right into my food forest and even this walking path to expand right into, the, right into this um, little guild here. But you can see especially where I fleshed the guild out more with lilies, um, raspberries, hazelnuts, sea buckthorn. Um, you know, and the raspberries are really spreading out into this grass path. It's not the grass that's creeping in, it's actually my food forest that's creeping out. So it's really a shade battle, um, a sunlight battle that's fought at the edges of forests and that's fought at the edges of your food forest as well. As well as just your garden paths. So, if you want to keep grasses from creeping into the garden, but you don't want to plant in a like super, super dense um, guild setup like this for growing your tomatoes, for example, so you just like to have a more organized look, what you can do is still wall your garden with deep tap rooters like comfrey. Um, you could put raspberries in, but the raspberries will try to spread through your garden. You can just cut them though. Um, but then you have like, you know, a wall edge of food or a wall edge of something that you want, comfrey that you can chop and drop into your proper garden bed, um, but then you don't have the grasses creeping in. So that's just an idea. It's really, um, the shade barrier is super, super effective. I wish I would have talked about that a little more in yesterday's video, so this will just have to be a bit of an update video to that. We'll also give a quick little update of the wetland guild here. Um, you can see what happens when you totally neglect a place. I've been really focusing on the pond and spending a lot of time up there for my wetland. I've actually moved the water, I piped it over towards another area to get water more um, moved up to you know plants I care about a little more than down here. This uh, is basically invisible with the overgrowth of all the cress. Um, there is water in there. So the system is still flowing, it's still working, there's some of the water getting down into here, um, but you can really see what nature wants this to turn into. It wants this to turn into a sea of green, which isn't bad, and you know, scary, as scary as it might look, it's actually not a bad thing. And you can see that a lot of the trees are actually doing really well in here. So totally happy living inside this giant, dense jungle. So I should probably come in here, maybe tidy this, this up a bit, but we have actually no red on our blueberries here, which means for some reason, 
Um, the pH appears to be fine, and this is getting as much iron as it needs. It's actually doing really well. So my wife's kind of laughing at me here, <laughs> looking at this. But I mean, everything's actually doing really well. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting, at least as far as the experiment goes. The water is, <laughs> I mean, the rocks are all in there still. So the water is in there. It's just the water cress is like that green plant. And that's like popped up and gone nuts. Gone absolutely crazy. One thing I am totally noticing though, is that my Chicago hardy fig is absent. So it's dead. It never came back this year. Let me see. It's really hard to know where I can step. So I had it planted here. Here it is right here. Covered in slugs. But it did not actually regrow back from the root here. So that's interesting. See how the next one does near the pond. This one didn't this one didn't want to live. Chicago hardy fig. So this one didn't want to live. It was doing great last year, it just didn't survive the winter and it didn't pop up from the roots. So that's interesting. But for example, the peach is perfectly happy right in here. Very interesting. So one nice thing actually about this is tons of biomass for compost. Pretty much as much as I want. So I'll, I'll, I'll come down here and harvest some of this out. Um, this is edible, so could eat some of it but you know if I had goats or chickens or anything like that this would be great food for them great free water source the crazy abundance is the the water plus plants that love it like the watercress and then just the the soil being healthy due to the over planting and the thick planting with tons of water tons of sunlight for the plants that can get up over it those peaches will probably do really really well in here It'll be a, a problem of mine to keep these pathways clear so I can get at them. That'll be the challenge. Not problem, but the challenge. And then a reward of tons and tons and tons, probably literally, of free biomass for, for compost and soil building. But interesting. So one thing that I could do about this, if I wanted to make, like, you know, make this look nicer is in the fall, all this will die back. I'll be able to see the stream again and I could basically pull some of the rocks out, widen it and deepen it a little bit. And then that'll get, uh, that should get it to where I can actually see in here and see the rocks. Cause there'll be watercress on the edges, but not taking over the stream. I choose you, grapes. <sighs> I was picking from this raspberry patch just yesterday and couldn't find any finished raspberries. I said you have to come pick them every day and just look at how many more are now basically, you know, out, like hours from being ready to pick. So when I say you have to like be on top of your berries, you definitely do. These here, like this whole branch, might be at least half ready by later this afternoon. Oh my goodness. So, so good. So you have to really be on top of it. Hire some kids. They'll make sure you get none of them. So thanks for watching this little video, and I'll see you on the next one. And I'll leave you with these little birds. What are these? Anyone knows? Let me know. Little chickadees or something like that. Don't want to get too close.